Welcome to Isadora Tutorial 3. We learned how to play a movie and how to composite and blend images, but now we need to learn how to take advantage of Isadora's scene structure, moving from scene to scene to allow you multiple setups. So as we move on now to work with the different scenes, we want to make sure that the first projector, the intensity, is raised back up to 100. So we see both images. Now let's say that at this point, this scene is perfect. We, this is the first scene of our show, we're really prepared for that, and now we want to move on to do another scene that's going to take place later. I want to show you how to copy and paste scenes, but before we do that, it's important that we name the scenes so we have an idea of what they do and what's going on with them. Now this scene is already selected because it's active, it's bright blue. That means that we can simply go to the scenes menu and choose rename scene. At that point, the scene itself becomes a text edit box, and I'm going to type the word 1, and then I'm going to hit the return key. Again, since the scene is already selected, we can go to the edit menu and say copy. Then, I'm going to deactivate this scene by clicking to the right. I want you to take a look at the images on the stage. As soon as I click, they disappear, and the scene turns gray. That's because the scene is no longer active, it's not running, movies aren't playing, therefore, of course, the stage is black. The other thing that happens is, you'll notice by the cursor there, I have a blinking insertion point. That's telling me where uh, the next paste is going to occur. So I go to the Edit menu, and I say Paste. And at that insertion point, an exact duplicate of the first scene that we did appears. So we can tell the difference between the two movies. We're going to change the movies that they're playing right away. So I'm going to go to the left of the word movie here in the first movie player and click. And I'm going to change that to movie number three. And now I have this little zoom happening on a close-up of an eye. And in the second movie player, I'm going to choose movie number five. And then I click there, type number five, and hit return. Now, notice this movie has sound. For the moment, we're not interested in having the sound up, so what you can do in that situation, if you don't want the sound, is I'm going to click on the dot to the left of the word volume on this movie player and simply reduce that sound to zero. But at any time, if you would like to hear the sound of the movie, which it's the default, that you will actually hear it. So, okay, we've got our two clips there, and like before, I can use the control key to move this image and the shift key to move this one. And so now, I've got my two images positioned where I wanted them. Let's give this scene a different name so we know it's distinct from the other one. Again, I go to the Scenes menu, choose Rename Scene, and now I'm going to type 2. And for our final scene for this example, I'm going to simply do the process again. I click on the scene, I go to the Edit menu and say Copy, click to the right of it, Go to the edit menu again to choose paste. You can also use duplicate, by the way. And now I've got a third copy. Uh, I'm going to change it to two other movies again. Let's go back to the dancer, and I'll use the eye zoom on the other movie. And let's make a couple other modifications. I'm going to go to the zoom of the first projector and make this one bigger now. And I'm going to do the same with the eye. And I'm actually going to change the blend mode back to additive so that they don't obscure each other. By the way, when you use the layering, the additive modes don't matter because the layering has no impact when you use additive. And I'll move these around a little bit too, as we did by holding down the whole control key and the shift key to move the images. We should also rename the third scene so we know what's happening. And I'm going to go to the Scenes menu and say Rename Scene and call this 3. So we now have the three scenes. And the next thing I want to show you is very important because this is how you actually can navigate from one scene to the next. So click back on scene number one. Now you'll notice that everything returns back to exactly the way it was when we left. That's critical because in Isidore you don't save each scene when you leave it. Actually whatever values are there at the moment you leave the scene, those are remembered for the next time you come back. So it's exactly how we left it. Now what we want to set up is a situation where we can hit a key on the keyboard and actually move from the first scene to the second scene. To do that, <clears throat> click on the toolbox group number 5. Then take an, an actor called the Keyboard Watcher and bring that down here somewhere. Also, we need from group number 7 
an actor called the jump actor. And we're going to put that right next to the keyboard watcher. Okay, the keyboard watcher comes from group number five, which is the keyboard and mouse group. These are actors that all look for input from the keyboard or the mouse of your computer. Right now, the keyboard watcher, you can see, is looking for a capital letter A. It's important to point out, by the way, that capital letter A and small letter A are not the same. But in general, when I'm doing a performance, I want to make sure and use the biggest key on the keyboard so that I absolutely don't miss it if I'm uh, in the middle of a show. So we're going to change this. I'm going to click on the letter A to the left of the words key range. And this is a little bit different than the other Isadora values. Because we're putting in a letter, we have to put it in single quotes. But I'm going to press the, the single quote, and then I'm going to type the space bar, which of course you can't see there because it's a blank space. And then I'll hit single quote again. So single quote, the letter you want to see, and then single quote again, and then I hit return. Okay, so now the keyboard watcher is looking for the space bar. Now next to that again we have the jump actor. And just to illustrate an important point, you know, this has an input that we haven't seen yet, a trigger input. Um, basically that's like a switch or a push button that when you touch it, it activates the module and it does whatever it's supposed to do. And in this case, the jump actor jumps. And where it jumps is to another scene. I just want you to take note that down here it says plus one. That means it's going to jump one scene to the right. So just to try this out before we connect anything, what I want you to do is to point the cursor at the little dash to the left of the word trigger and click and you'll see that you jumped to scene number two. Notice there's no keyboard uh, watcher and jump actor in this scene yet because we haven't added them. So if I go back, what we're going to do is instead of having, to, of course, to click with the mouse, we're going to use the keyboard watcher to jump. So I'm going to click on the dot to the right of the word key, and I'm going to connect that to the trigger input of the jump actor. Now, if I hit the space bar on the keyboard, I jump to scene two. But sometimes you don't want to do a cut, which is what we just did. Let's say that we wanted to do an eight second cross dissolve from the first scene to the second scene. I'm going to click on the number zero to the left of the word fade and type eight for eight seconds and hit return. Now when I hit the space bar, you'll see that it gradually does a crossfade from the first scene to the second scene. So to complete our little setup, I'm going to click back on scene one make a selection rectangle around the keyboard watcher and jump actor so I can use them again and say copy. Go to scene two, click here on the scene editor so it knows you're going to paste some actors and then say paste. And now I've got the exact same thing over here. I'm going to click on this fade and say two seconds. So now this one is going to jump one to the right plus one and the last step is I'm going to go directly to scene number three, click on the scene editor there, and again choose paste. But this time I'm going to change the jump input of the jump actor to minus two, because this actor is going to jump back to the first scene. It's going to go back two scenes. Minus two means two to the left. So now that we have uh, this jump actor in scene number three, I'm going to change this to two seconds. Go back to number two here, make sure that's two seconds, and the first one is an eight second cross dissolve. Okay, so we have this little setup, but now what we'd like to do is we'd like to actually start from a blackout. That's the way we'd like to start our show. That's often the case, right? So we need a scene at the beginning that's black that is before scene one. Let's add that. I'm going to go here, click to the left of the scene one, and now you'll notice I have an insertion point right there. This time I'm not going to paste. I'm going to go to the Scenes menu and say Insert Scene. And I'm going to choose Rename Scene from the Scenes menu and call this Blackout. I already have leftover from before the Keyboard Watcher and the Jump Actor. I'm going to click here in the Scene Editor and paste those. And this is again already set to plus one. I'm going to make this quite a quick one. It's going to be one second fade. So this scene has no movies in it. It just has the keyboard watcher and the jump. So now what I'm able to do, we're ready to begin our show. The actor walks on the stage, and I hit the space bar.
and we have a one second fade into scene number one.